Dave, why is it you just can't have nice stuff? Apple's Mac Pro is no longer pro-sized, and damned if the NSA ain't tapping my email again. I'm John P, and this is Geek Beat. Super Rant Edition. Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Dropo. Thousands of you guys joined in yesterday as we all watched the Apple WWDC event. I just want to say WWF. I don't know why. It'd be like a wrestling event. Well, that's what it was like. And they did announce some good stuff. All new iOS 7 that's going to add a bunch of new features. A new OS 10.9 with a funny name that'll add a few new features. Updated MacBook Airs. And this, the new Mac Mini. I mean, the new Mac Pro. At one-eighth the size of the outgoing generation, Apple says the new Mac Pro Mini is basically twice as fast as a previous generation. And it's got an integrated handle on top. Plus, the new Mini Mac Pro is going to have next-gen Thunderbolt, so you can hook up all the external expansion you want. There are so many problems with this logic, I don't know where to begin. First of all, professionals don't move Mac Pros. These computers sit in one spot basically forever. So who thought they needed to be mobile all of a sudden? Mac Pros are heavy duty workstations, you know, for professionals. Second, they eliminated all of the internal expansion capabilities. Our Mac Pros have four three and a half inch disk drives in each one, plus multiple video cards, extra USB cards, and God knows what else. You literally can't add any of this stuff to the new Mac Pro. Someone told me Thunderbolt's even better, it's faster. Who cares? If I use four of the fastest SSD drives on the market, they still won't saturate the SATA controller. And when they're installed inside the machine, like with the current Mac Pro, they can be permanently mounted without a chance of being accidentally disconnected. Plus, they use the machine's built-in power supply. Try that with four Thunderbolt drives, and you're going to have to stack them on top of one another, each in its own chassis, and each with its own power supply. That is not professional, folks. And good luck when you get a faulty Thunderbolt cable or when someone decides to borrow one of your RAID external Thunderbolt drives and you don't longer have RAID. I'm just going to quit now. It's not green either. It's not green. Apple knows what they're doing though. They're abandoning the real small professional market in favor of the more profitable consumer professional market where they can charge higher margins for things stamped professional. It's like in Tommy Boy where Ray Zielinski wanted to buy Callahan Auto Parts just so he could slap a premium name on a crappy part. Son, you gotta look at it from my point of view. Callahan's a premium name. That's what I'm buying. I can make the parts in one of my factories, put them in a Callahan box, and sell them in my stores at a premium price. Anyway, the new Mac Pro is gorgeous and would make a beautiful addition to a home where Mac Minis or iMacs just won't cut it. Like, maybe for a photographer. But after years of waiting for an update to our professional video editing hardware, this is as disappointing as, well, Final Cut 10. Speaking of photographers, the fastest, most secure way to store up to 20 terabytes of data is the Drobo 5D that connects to your Mac or PC with ultra-fast Thunderbolt or USB 3 connections. The 5D is direct attached storage, so it doesn't connect to a network, and it's definitely not some cloud somewhere so the NSA can snoop on your files. What I love most about the 5D is how easy it is to add drives and increase capacity as you need it. Check this out. Here's the deal. I've got another hard drive right here. I'm going to shove it in just to see how quickly it adjusts with the new space. This is a new 4, ter four terabyte drive. Currently, as you will see, hang on, let me click on the other screen. There are two 3 terabyte drives and one 4 terabyte, and then those two are empty. So I'm going to shove this in here, one-handed. Okay, uh, it's a little, a little trickier with it's one-handed. Hang on. There we go. Got it started. Now, shove that in there. Now we're going to give this a second. Bam, there's another four terabyte drive in the bay. 
And let's check our capacity. Oh, wow, our capacity. Just like that, nine terabytes. So if you need some fast, redundant storage, you know what to get. I can't decide who I hate more right now, the IRS, the TSA, or the NSA. If you haven't heard yet, former CIA analyst Edward Snowden came forward with evidence of sweeping surveillance programs that are generically targeting U.S. and foreign citizens by cataloging everything they can get their hands on under the ruse of fighting terrorism. Does it target the actions of Americans? Uh... NSA and the intelligence community in general uh, is focused on getting intelligence wherever it can by any means possible that it believes on the grounds of sort of a self-certification that they serve the national interest. Uh, originally we saw that uh, focus very narrowly tailored as foreign intelligence uh, gathered overseas. Now increasingly we see that it's happening domestically and to do that they, uh, the NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time simply because that's the easiest, most efficient, and most valuable way to achieve these ends. Basically, Snowden abandoned his life, left his girlfriend, his $200,000 a year job, and fled the country so he could disclose what he believed is a radical abuse of power by U.S. intelligence agencies. There's absolutely no way to know what's going to happen to him, especially in a couple of months after all the attention has moved on. And a government as powerful as ours certainly has ways of making the attention move on. Back to the story, though. Snowden tells us that basically any analyst can gain access to anything you've ever said online and that the system's capabilities are growing at such a rate they will soon be unstoppable. So the question is, do you care? The NSA probably already has a digital file on you including the contents of your entire email history as well as any chat records, phone calls, or anything else you've ever sent through the internet. And nothing is going to stop them from continuing to gather that data and nothing can stop anyone with access from using it against you at some time in the future. And not all people are good and honorable. You know, Dave, if they were smart, they would have just marketed this as a free cloud backup service. Like Google Drive. What's most amazing about this are all the attacks from prominent politicians ranging from President Obama to Senator Feinstein. Everyone seems to be jumping on the Snowden broke the law bandwagon instead of taking the time to consider that whistleblowers by definition have to disclose in order to shine light on abuses. Even when disclosure isn't something that would normally be considered legal. There's already a White House petition with over 40,000 signatures requesting a full pardon for Snowden, and I for one think it would be a good move for President Obama. Otherwise, given the recent incidents where the IRS was targeting certain groups and the Department of Justice was spying on the AP News Agency, people are going to get the idea that Obama is all for violating privacy and eliminating personal liberty. So what do you think? about the new Mac Pro or the Snowden scandal. I really want to know. Leave a comment on our blog, on YouTube, or tweet me on Twitter, at John Pose, or even better, on Google+, google.com forward slash plus John P. See you guys later.